He tried to stop the car. He said, you better not stop this car. He said, okay, so he put it on the truck, drove us back to Pennsylvania, to my house. How far away were you from Pennsylvania at that juncture? Oh, God, about an hour. Oh, wow. An hour and... What'd that tow cost you? This is the plaintiff, Samuel Pantoliano. He says his car overheated. He brought it to the defendant's shop for repair, and 10 minutes after he paid the guy to fix it, it overheated again. He brought it back two more times, finally got stuck on the highway for three hours because it overheated a third time, and finally had it towed to another mechanic. The other mechanic took a look and discovered the defendant had installed a thermostat backwards, which caused the entire engine to blow. Some mechanic. He's suing for $3,000 for additional repairs. This is the defendant, Casimir Babula. He says he's been working on cars since 1966, and there's no way in the world he would put a thermostat in backwards. The money the plaintiff paid to another mechanic is between them. He's not responsible because things break every day on cars. He owes nothing. He's accused of causing things to overheat. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. You see, they come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, Samuel Pantiliano. Yes. You are suing Casimir Babula. You are the owner of the business. He's suing your business, but yes. you don't want your business name mentioned. <coughs> For $3,000 that you say you are out as a result of an improper repair you say he did. Tell me what happened here. My wife and I, we visited my daughter in uh, West Milford, New Jersey. So we, we arrived there and I drove up our driveway and I noticed that my, my temperature gauge was moving past the normal, which is in the center. And uh, I'd never done that before, but I checked it out. And, and what year car is this? It's a 2006 Jeep. Grand Cherokee Laredo. Okay. So I noticed it was getting hot. I was in her driveway. I shut the car off, and uh, I said, well, this has to be checked by a mechanic. So I asked my daughter, do you know anybody in town that's a mechanic? She says, no. But she says, I'm going to go next door and ask my neighbor. The neighbor came over. He told me where to go. Uh, the car was cooled down. I started it up. My daughter followed me to his garage. I got there around 10 to 5. The gas station attendant told me that the mechanic had just left at 5 o'clock. All right, so the I next got, day you talked to him, and so what happened? The next morning at 8 o'clock, my daughter drove me to his garage, and I, I met him, and I talked to him. I, he wanted to know what was wrong. I told him my car was overheating. He says, well, leave it, and I'll give you a call. I'll check it out. So when he calls you, when does he call you? Two, three hours. And tells you what? He says, I just changed the thermostat. Come pick up your car. It's okay. ready. Okay, and you paid him how much? The two hundred and six two hundred dollars and six cents. And six cents. All right. So then you take the car, and what happens? Ten minutes away from his garage, the car overheated. I pulled over to the side. I waited, and uh, the police came. I explained to the, the, the police, and she says, "Okay," but I said, "I'm going to turn around and go back to the garage." But a neighbor came out and he put some water in my radiator so I can turn around and go back to the garage. And that's exactly what I did. And when you brought the car back to him, what did he say? Well, he says, leave it, and I'll check it out, and I'll give you a call. OK. So okay. he calls you, and he tells you he changed the what? The water pump. I said, OK, if that's what it needs. And I didn't know this. He never told me he was going to do that. Did he charge you for it? Actually, no. OK. He said to me at that time, I'm going to take the car out for a, a road test. I said, I'll, I'll, you mind if I come with you? He says, no. So I, I went so with him. So you take it out. So we take it out for a road test. Now he sees that the gauge went all the way over to the hot position again. So he brought it back to the garage, lifted the hood up. So he checked the engine out. He checked the hoses out. He checked everything under that hood. And he, he told me that everything is normal. But how come the needle is registering hot? He goes, 
that, right, that, that needle is probably wrong. But the engine was running, idling. I saw no steam coming out of it. He's checking it all, and I said to him, you know, I, I want to go home. Is it okay for me to drive another two hours to Pennsylvania? He said, it's fine. It's okay. So my wife and I get in the car. My daughter goes home. I get on my way, and before I know it, my engine light comes on. I pull over, shut the car off. I waited to the cool down, maybe a half hour, 45 minutes. I tried to start it up, it would not start. So I said, oh God, I'm, this is gonna get dark pretty soon. I better call a tow truck and get out of here. And that's exactly what I did. Okay. I called the tow truck. They came two and a half hours later. He tried to start the car. He said, you better not start this car. I said, okay, so he put it on the truck. Drove us back to Pennsylvania, to my house. How far away were you from Pennsylvania at that junction? <sighs> oh, God. About an hour. Oh, wow. Hour and... What'd that tow cost you? Well, actually, uh, I had AAA. Oh, that's marvelous. And uh, it didn't cost me anything. Right. So you take the car to a mechanic, another mechanic, when you're home. So when I got and home... Can I see everything that mechanic gave you? Any estimates, any work orders, everything? This is the receipt. I, uh, she wants a bill. Did he write any bills or estimates for yeah. the judge? Okay. Everybody's I'll bring it. Okay. Pictures? Every okay. Great. So what am I supposed to be seeing on the pictures here? Well, Your Honor, uh, you know, like I say, I'm not a mechanic. I know you're not a mechanic. But according to... You don't to know that, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? So go ahead. So according to my mechanic, he says to me, if you can see the spring after taking off the, the housing that covers... The thermostat? The thermostat's put in upside down. Backwards. Backwards. That's the reason why the car overheated and blew the head gaskets. What say you to that? Okay, I had a complaint that the car was overheating. So I brought it into the shop, let it run for you know half an hour, got it good and warm, listened to the fan cycle and everything. And it was not doing anything that he said. It was not overheating or nothing like that. So I called him up. Most people don't bring a car to the shop. I understand that. So I called him up. But you could not duplicate customer complaint. That's what I told him. I right. couldn't duplicate your concern. So my only thought was the thermostat could have stuck or something. And he agreed to that. And he agreed to put a thermostat in it, which I did. Ran the car again. Let it thermocycle. Let the fan run as it should. Road tested it for about two miles. And everything was fine called him, he picked it up, and he left. And about maybe 10, 15 minutes later, came back, said it was still overheating. So I said it could be any number of things, but without further looking, I don't know. So we agreed it might be a water pump or something like that. But, but why were we saying it was a water because pump? Because it, it was overheating and not water not circulating. Okay. And there's, there's many reasons for that. It was just one that I haven't... Well, you know, did, were you able to duplicate the customer's complaint that the car the was overheating? The second time, no. Well, the first time, were you? No. How long do you feel like you have to drive it before you can duplicate the customer complaint? Is two uh, miles enough? It, after letting it idle for 15 minutes, yeah, I assume two miles should be plenty. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. Why is it that when you take your car to a mechanic for a problem, you can never duplicate the problem when they're looking at it? Why is that? You're nodding. It's happened to you, I can tell. It has happened to me, yeah. Why is that? I, I don't know. It's just one of those things. I think it's... When it, <laughs> Why? I mean, it, it happens all the time until you take it in. I don't understand the, the karma of this. Well, I guess it's because you think of everything else, and you should have said it. You should have said the problem. I, I feel in, I'm in no better shape right now than I was when I first asked the question, going inside the courtroom. I told him it could be a water pump, but without looking, I don't know. Did you charge him for the water pump? I didn't charge him because I did not find the problem. Okay. I say, you know, the car's not overheating now, and I'm not sure, you know, what the reason is. If you can leave it, I'll look further into it. But he insisted he could not leave it. He had to go back uh, home to Pennsylvania. Okay. And he said, do you think I'll make it? I says, I don't know. That's a, that's a gamble. All right. So according to his mechanic, um, if you can see the spring, it's not in right, the thermostat. Okay, that, that's very difficult to see what that picture is, but... Well, that's a spring. And it certainly doesn't look like a new thermometer, a new thermostat either. It looks like that could be a All picture. All I see is a spring. That could be a picture of anything. I have no idea what it is. Well, that's a spring, though. I'm seeing a and spring, right? Is it true that if the spring is showing, then the thermostat is not put in right? Okay, if the thermostat is installed backward, you won't go five miles without overheating. All right, now what did you end up doing with the car? You ended up trading it in. Yes, But not before paying $1,560.04 for the repairs. 
Yes. So you're suing today for what you paid for the thermostat because it didn't work. Right. A car rental of one day? Two days. Two days to get the car repaired. The repairs that you paid the new mechanic, and then you're also suing for $1,192.80 for inconvenience and aggravation. Yes. Okay, what's that about? Well, I had a lot of inconvenience and a lot of aggravation. So do I. <laughs> Nobody's paying me for it. Uh, do you ever think in your lives that you would find yourself at um, this stage in front of Judge Milian from the People's Court? No. No. <laughs> and I watch you every night. Like you watch me too, right? No, I can't say that. Yeah, just say it anyway. Occasionally. Just say it anyway. <laughs> All right. I am going to find, based on what I've heard and the pictures I saw and um, the catastrophe you endured, however, I'm not going to um, award you inconvenience and aggravation. That's not really a cause of action. This is a contracts case, really. It's like I, I hired you to do something and you did something else and it caused me damage, so he needs to make you whole, but not like get, there's no punitives in something like this or... So the thermostat, the rental, and the repairs, which is a total of $1,760.10. That's my verdict, verdict for the plaintiff. Good Thank luck, you. folks. Okay. Well, the plaintiff does indeed prevail in this case. Mr. Babula, the defendant, and the mechanic. Mechanic for 50 years, right? Yes. I got to tell you something. There are a lot of mechanics out there probably watching this right now. And they claimed, his mechanic claimed you put the thermostat in backwards. What, what do you think? Is that right or not? If it was in backwards, he wouldn't drive 10 miles without a problem. So that's, that other mechanic is wrong by saying that, that, right? That's... And do you think all the repairs he had done to his car were necessary then? No, I think they probably were necessary, but they obviously weren't done right. The car didn't run fine after that. But it really wasn't caused by the thermostat being in backwards, and that's your assessment. All right, I love what all the mechanics out there are saying right now. Oh, he's right, he's wrong. Okay, sorry about this. You lost the case. No okay, problem. thank you very much. You must sign some documents out there with our Officer McIntosh. Mr. Panagliano, hey. <laughs> How do you feel about the outcome now? Oh, I feel great. Okay. You still think it was the thermostat in backwards? Yes. Pretty sure of that? I'm positive. All right. He's got 60 years of experience. 50 years. I just gave him a little I'm, more time. I'm sure he's a very good mechanic, yeah. but we all make mistakes. All right. Well, you won. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Okay. Harvey, let's hear your opinion on this case. Uh, here's the deal, Doug. You can never sue for emotional upset when it's based on a breach of contract, period. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Nigel Harrison. He says he was ripped off by the unscrupulous used car salesman defendant, and he wants his money back. He bought a ticking time bomb from the guy. One day after he got it, the thing wouldn't start, and he's not going to allow the defendant to get away with ripping him off. He's suing for $1,000, the amount he's owed. This is the defendant, Bill Christos. He says the plaintiff bought a car and thinks he can return it. Sorry, but it doesn't work like that, and he should read his contract. He's also sorry the guy's mommy and girlfriend don't like the car. He's been in the car business a long time, and if anyone's actually owed money today, it's him. He's accused of unloading a lemon. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $2,500 for the balance owed on the deposit and a loss of business. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket. The plaintiff says he bought a car from the defendant that was a ticking time bomb. It blew up the day after he bought it. But the defendant says it's all about the plaintiff's mommy and girlfriend not liking the car. It's the case of whip over the whip. Thank you, Douglas. You're Nigel welcome. Harrison, yes. you are suing Power Motor Group Incorporated, represented here by Bill Christos. You are the vice president? Correct. For a $1,000 deposit that you had placed on a car that you bought. Yes. You are counterclaim against him an additional $500 that he still owes you on that same car. Correct. Plus $2,000 for loss of business. Because Correct. according to you, he made a scene. Tell me what happened here. I saw him online. He was selling a Honda Accord Coupe. That's what I wanted. I went down, I test drive the Coupe. He said, you want to put a $100 deposit to hold the coupe? I said, no. I said, I'll be back in a week and so forth. He said, in the meantime, we'll do the paperwork. So he called me after a week and said, you're approved. He, called, he asked me how much money I was working with. I said, $1,000. So after he told me, I, th I told him 1000 he said, you're approved, and the loan expired on Tuesday. I said, I'll be there that Tuesday. Uh, so I went down to Tuesday. He said, if, I don't, if you don't like anything on my lot, 
I'll try to get you that coupe that you wanted. I said, okay, I, when I went, I picked the- What do you um, mean get you the coupe? That coupe had already flown the coupe, right? Yeah, like that the, coupe yeah, was yeah, gone. Yeah, the Honda coupe. Okay, coupe, yeah. so just get you another one, but how do you know that that's a good, was this a brand new car or is this no, a used car? No, these are all used. Well, then every, car, every used car is a different car. Wouldn't you want right, to test drive it and right, everything? Right, exactly. All right. Well, well with this one, um, he said I'm approved. <clears throat> I picked the car. He told me to sit in it. So I sit in it, he said, you like it? He said, yeah. He said, come on, let's do the paperwork. Did so, you test drive the car? Nope. He just I was turning it on. We what, turn it. We turn why it on. didn't you just test drive the car? Well, I, I assume he had him some integrity. He was being fair. Why wouldn't you test drive a used I car should've. you're buying? I should. I should have. Yeah, it's nothing I, to do with I, him. Don't blame it on him. That's ridiculous. Right. Okay, go on. And um, I mean, you're a grown man. You're not an 18 year old kid. What, correct. Um, I went in. We did the paperwork. While we're doing the paperwork, I said to him, "The car is seven thousand dollars." I said, "What's the total cost when all this financing is done?" He said, "Don't focus on that." Let's focus on the monthly payment. Well, come of course back. he's saying that. He's trying to get uh, your money. He's yeah. trying to make a sale. Yeah, he said, That's come. his job. But what, did you say to him, no, I do want to know the total cost with well, financing? I, or I, you just said, oh, okay, I'll just No, I was just paper. silent. And he said, come back in a year and we refinance. I know, but don't you want to know right now, just in case refinancing doesn't work? Should I should ask him. Oh, you I think? Said, well, it was a... Uh, what was it totally going to cost? Because it's a special finance situation, uh, the car is eleven five seventy five. So it went from seven fees. to uh, to eleven five. It was never seven. It was never seven. Never how much was. is the car? Eleven five seventy five. Oh, how much was the deal price. with the financing? How much would he end up paying? Oh, all the way out after yeah, he pays all the, way the out. loan. All the way out. This is going to cost him twenty two thousand seven hundred forty nine dollars. Twenty two thousand dollars. So the eleven thousand was going to cost him twenty two. Why so much? Twenty three point nine. Is his credit bad? Yes. Very bad. Very, very, very bad. Very, very bad. I had to lend the money to help him buy the car. Maybe he shouldn't be buying a $22,000 car. That's his decision, not mine. Of course it is, because he's the one who's going to fail on the bank, not not on you. You not just You just have $500, and then you got the loan from the bank. And the bank ended up thinking he's a good risk because they think that he gave $1,500 instead of $1,000. Does the bank know that you loaned him a third of the money down. Absolutely. All right, so what happens? You take the I, car and what I happens? Take the, car, take the car and while going home, it was making a lot of noise. Also, when I get, got home, I went inside the house for 15, 20 minutes. I came back outside to leave, and the car was dead. I said, whoa. I got on the phone, and I called his office. They said it was like close to 6 o'clock. They're closing up. I spoke to a gentleman by the name of Mike. Mike said for me to shake the steering wheel and press on the brake, and the car would start. I did just that, and the car started. I decided to bring the car back because prior, when I went, when he was leaving the, um, the lot, one of his guys that he sent to inspect the vehicle was shaking his head. And I said, this guy got me. So basically, I went down, I gave him several reasons I don't want the car. What are the several reasons? I told him my family didn't want it, my parents didn't Why didn't like your it. family want it? Well, I told him the car, basically, the way it sound, the way it smell, and what took place where the car is like an old-fashioned television. You got to hit it to make it stomp, comes, comes on. I said, you, you, for the money, what this guy wants doesn't make any sense. So um, he told they me. They gave you a lot of grief, right? Yeah. When and you showed them the paperwork and they yeah, saw that you were, yeah, that yeah. you had, that you had, be, be, you were basically paying 100% in financing. I mean, I don't even know how else to. And they say I got a brand new car for that deal. Yeah. And basically, um, he might have, he got very gangster and now I decided to call the police. Wait, who got gangster? He told me to get off the lot, and I said to him, I don't want the car. He said, the loan is in your name. Get off my lot. I don't do business like this. I've been doing business for 30 years. I also own pro apartment building, real estate. I don't do business like this. And show me on my contract. I said, you never told me as his. He said, I don't do business like that. And then well, when did you read your contract? No, I didn't. Okay, because you have a warranty. He has a warranty, right? So this is an 84,000-mile car that will have a 30-day warranty on it. Okay. 30-day, 1,000-mile New York State statute. Did you give him more of a warranty than no. that? No. What's a Win Deluxe warranty? Oh, then it is, yes. Then he has yes, a warranty. Yes, he has an 18 month warranty, right? You see it somewhere? Okay. Yeah. You see about the Win Deluxe. You charge him for the Win Deluxe warranty. I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so he doesn't have a 30 day warranty. He has an 18 month warranty, right? Okay. So you, he comes, what does he tell you is the reason why he wants to return the car? That he doesn't like it, and his mother and uh, his girlfriend really need to have him give the car back. Why, uh, I really didn't get into more than that because at that point in time, a day after, after explaining to him 100%, just let me go back a little yeah, bit. Ahead. Mr. Harrison every week would contact me and promise that he was coming down, coming down, coming down. To I do what? There was to, no car. To buy a car. To buy a car. To buy any to, car. To buy a car. He needed wheels. I'm, I'm going to help him out. I'm a nice guy. 
No, you're not. You're a guy no. who's in business. Please I'm a don't. nice person. Please do but... not tell me. Just like when he says, I didn't test drive it, I thought he had integrity. Please don't tell me you're selling him a car because you're a nice guy. This is well, your business. Yeah, but I'm a nice guy in my business. There are people that don't do it nice. I'm a nice person. I went to his house and picked him up. Yeah, because uh, you know what? The, this... Go ahead. I, I don't see I'm how that so could be I'm so torn <laughs> when I talk to people like you because here's the thing. I understand that a guy like him can't get wheels if he has really bad credit. And Correct. so you're the one place he can go to. I'm helping you. But it you. breaks my heart that of all the people who, the people who cannot afford to pay 100% more than what the car is being sold for in financing is that person right there. And yet th that kind of person is always a person who will end up in these kind of contracts. But, you know, and then I stop myself and say, well, that's a little paternalistic of you, Marilyn, or maternalistic, because the truth is the, the alternative for you is no wheels. Correct. So I get it. I understand it. But please don't tell me that you're saving America. You're not. You're in it to make a buck. I don't deny you that. What? So don't <laughs> snow me on that. So if you buy a car and it, a used car and it literally falls apart, doesn't work the next day, can you undo the deal? No, I don't think so because um, you sold it as is. So you buy. I know, but at a point, the next day. Next time, nines out of ten times, you're going to be. It's you buy as is. Well, it is as is, but come on, the next day. No, uh, you bought yourself a lemon. you got to get over it. Don't be so aggressive with oh, me. <laughs> Going inside the courtroom. So what happens? A guy keep, comes keep in. Keep in mind. The he spends every, that, every week coming in and telling you, I want a car. He doesn't come in. He keeps calling me every week. I want to deal with you. You're a nice guy, Bill. Mr. Nigel, I'll come to your house and pick you up. If you can't get here, not a problem. We have three days left in the approval. Okay, Bill comes down. I send my porter to go get him. We pick him up. Everything's fine. I showed him a few vehicles, not one car. I didn't say this is the only car you can have. We walked the lot together as a manager. I took Mr. Harrison myself. There was no salesman involved. He picked the car that he drove out of the lot with. He didn't even uh, test drive it, did he? That's his, yeah, he didn't want to. He was in a rush. He had to get don't out. Don't you think I don't that know. that's odd? No, nah, believe it or not. You don't think that's incredibly unemployed? No, nah, believe it or not, it happens more than you think. I've been doing this 30 years, Your Honor. I've seen some crazy stuff in my business. and No test driving? Yeah, of maybe 50% of the people test drive cars. Mm. It's just one of these weird facts. No test driving yeah. of the car. It's and and just now I can address the no start. The no start that did take place at 7 o'clock that evening while we were leaving, and Micah did take that phone call, was a lock steering wheel. It wasn't a malfunction of the vehicle. And then from that day, I haven't heard a problem with the vehicle. Okay, now he, but he comes in the next day. And now he starts to cause a scene. So now I have a problem. Now I have... Michael with a customer trying to sell a car. I have Nigel calling me a thief and a liar in front of a customer that's leaving me a deposit to buy another car. We lose that deal, hence the countersuit. All right. Here's the thing. You come the very next day, you go somewhere, and they tell you the car needs $2,200 worth of work. Yes. Who did you go to to get that the very next day? The mecha a mechanic. So, so the, the same day, guy who does... Slow your roll. Let me do my job. The same guy who doesn't test drive a car mm. takes a car to a mechanic the very next day to, to write up something that says estimated repair cost $2,200. Yes, yeah, sure. What did they say was wrong with it? Well, they said the alternator. Okay, hold on. Is the alternator covered under warranty in the wind package? Probably would have been, yeah. It is. Now, right. question number one, he has the wind deluxe package, right? Okay, tell me. Go ahead and show that to him, whether the alternator is under warranty. I think it says it right here where you highlighted it. I'm well, glasses. I need your answer. Yes is the answer. I want answer. your answer on the record. Yes is the answer on the record. Yes. The alternator's under warranty. Right. And it's under warranty for the next 18 months from whatever the date of purchase. Whatever the contract was, yes. Can you look at it and tell me if it's 18 months? Yeah, that's typically what we offer. No, 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 no. In this deals. case, I need to hear it from your lips. How long is the warranty? 18 months. Okay. Now, the next thing that your repair friend says is that the car needs a timing belt. Is the timing belt under warranty? Without reading all these things, the answer would probably be no. Because no, you're going to stand internal. there and read it, and we're going to wait, and I highlighted it, so I, take a yes, look at it. Yes, yes, it is. You see it, right? I, I, I it's under warranty. Put your glasses lines. on. Give the man some glasses. I don't right. have them. So that's under warranty. The third thing your friend says is chain guider? Chain guide are right. worn. Is the chain under warranty? No, it's not. Look at the yellow. It's, it is. It is there, too? Okay. Yeah. No, give it to Mike if you can't see it. 
I would have been prepared if I knew there was a bill outstanding that he wanted to claim on. There's no bill. It's just an estimate. And I don't know if he ever even brought this to you or if he went to. No, he did never you go it after? To me. Yes, seeing I him? went. I went to after speak. seeing him in preparation yes. for court. So you never sure. sent this to him? No, I wasn't. Sp I spoke to him about it. Did you have this when you went to yeah. see him? Did no, you I didn't have that with me at night. No. Did you then? You come back at one. Yeah, and I didn't have that with me. Okay, no. so you didn't have it no, didn't have when you me. went no, to his no. lot. Only when I went to the. I thought so I you the got this, yeah. and then did you ever tell him here is here? These are the things that are wrong with it. I told or him. Or did you just prepare this for court? No, I told him what was wrong with it, and basically he didn't want to deal with me. He wanted his five hundred. Okay, now, where are we? That, by yeah. the way, the answer is yes, right? The yes. chain is covered, too? Isn't this a happy day? <laughs> it would turn out that everything wrong with your car is under warranty anyway. Where's the car now? You still have the car, right? Yeah, yes. Did you make that $500 payment? No. Then? Okay. And did you? And May 5th came and went. Did you make the payment to the bank? No. I, 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 what happened is on the 7th, I called the loan company, Credit Acceptance, and told them how he um, did the deal. I spoke to an agent by the name of Amber. She told me that the deal shouldn't have happened. Because I didn't give him fifteen hundred dollars, he advanced me, and he didn't discuss the okay. advancement. Now, with me. how does this change a contract you have with him? You sign a contract, and you have what's called buyer's remorse the next day. That's it. And this isn't even an as-is case. Mm. Every single thing that you have mentioned mm. that is wrong with the car mm. is, in fact, under warranty. Go take the car there and get it fixed. But that's your car. Get it fixed first, and then sell it if you want. But you have an eighteen-month warranty. See, I am a nice guy, Your Honor. You sold him the 18-month warranty. He paid for the 18-month yeah, warranty. Yeah, it may have not been there. And you, you know what? If you were a really nice guy, you know what you would have done? You would have said to him, tell me what's wrong with the car. And when he told you, you would have told him, instead of like going, oh, no, 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 you, just you would tell him, let's sit down, let's figure this out. Oh, you know what? All these things are under warranty. Bring the car in if there's really a problem. But, but the, you know, the... this is under your name. What do you think? Is that? You, know, you know how this works. You understand what financing means. They paid him for the car already. Right. They paid him his money. You owe it to the bank now. And if you don't pay it, they come after you. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is not working out for you, Nigel. Um, Mr. Harrison, here's what's going to happen. Oh, you have a counterclaim against him for the $500, uh, and you are not getting your $1,000 deposit back. So no on that, but yes, you deserve the $500 that he is already overdue. And this is your car, and understand that you have a warranty, and that all these things that are wrong with it, go take it over there to get fixed. Make him do it. So, Mr. Harrison, on your lawsuit against them for the return of the $1,000, the answer is no. And on your counterclaim against him for $2,500, I'm ruling in your favor only in the $500 balance that is owed to you that is overdue, frankly, at this point. That is my judgment. Good luck, folks. So in a fascinating case, it really should be seen by anybody buying a used car. The defendant, if you'll step over here, the plaintiff has just stepped out of the courtroom. Uh, you lost the case. Uh, first off, how do you feel about losing it? I, what's your reaction? Well, I think um, justice wasn't served. But it wasn't. But the car's still under warranty. You know that. The car, well, I was told by the mechanic every year I'm going to have a problem with it. The well, car is it doesn't no matter. The car is under warranty. You can get it fixed now for 18 months. Doesn't that make you feel better? You didn't no, know that? I don't want the car. You don't want, but you got it. Yeah, You're stuck with it. Yeah, for the time. Yeah, and you got to pay for it. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Well, one day at a time. Okay. Yeah. Well, good luck. Sorry yeah. about it. That's yeah. the way it works here in the court system. Now the uh, defendant's on his way out of the courtroom. The judge started off telling you you weren't a nice guy. No, I'm a great but, guy. But I help you don't seem like such time. a bad guy. No, thank you very much for noticing that. Okay. I mean, I'm here on behalf of all the car dealerships yeah. that have a bad rap for absolutely no reason. We help people all the time getting cars and helping them through tough situations, and I think we don't get the, the acknowledgement that we should. All right. Well, very good. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You win the case. Have a great day. Okay. Harvey? Okay, real simple. It is insane not to test drive the car and take it to a mechanic. Okay? <laughs> that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Joseph Kiaski Jr. He says the defendant is his former friend of over 30 years, and he can't believe it's come to this, a lawsuit. The guy owed him, so he offered to fix the transmission on his pickup truck. Well, it's been five years, and he just got the truck back. Problem is, the defendant promised him it would be in mint condition because it took so long to repair. It's not in mint condition. That's why he's suing his former friend here and now for the $5,000 he feels he's owed. 
This is the defendant, Lyle Wahlberg. He says the plaintiff and his wife would always moan about not having money, so he had a friend of his rebuild the transmission on the plaintiff's truck because he's a nice guy. This lawsuit came out of the clear blue sky. He has no idea what the plaintiff's problem is, but he does know he doesn't owe this man any money. He's accused of fouling up a friendship. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff was friends with the defendant for 30 years. He brought his car over to the defendant to fix the transmission. The guy had it for years, never did it. But the defendant says he has no idea why he's being sued. It's the case of on a mission over the transmission. Thank you, Douglas. Joseph Kayaski? Yes. You are suing Lyle Wahlberg for $5,000 that you say he owes you to fix up a 1992 Silverado that he promised he would fix up. Tell me what's going on. Well, my truck broke down in 2009, so I had it towed up to my house, and then I called Mr. Wahlberg to let him know that my truck broke down if, if his friend would just, like, help me out, you know, with the truck. Is that a mechanic? Yeah, he's a mechanic. How long have you two known each other? 30 years. There you go. So what happens? Mr. Wahlberg tells me to put the keys underneath the mat in my truck, leave the door unlocked, and that the gentleman will come up to tow the truck down to his place the next the following morning. Did that happen? Yes, that happened. And then what? And then they found out approximately a week and a half, two weeks after that, that there was something wrong, that the transmission either had to be rebuilt or they're going to put a new transmission in. OK, so then what happens? The truck sat there. Sat where? So at his friend's shop? At his friend's For how place long? of business until November of 2012. Why would anybody years, allow 13, your truck to sit there taking up space for three years? Because Mr. Wahlberg kept on saying that, oh, they can't find a transmission. Oh, it's got to be rebuilt. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I don't have the financial. Why does he have to pay to, tra to rebuild your transmission? Because he said he was going to do it as a favor because he wrote out a, a promissory note to me. No, why was he going to do it? As a friend. Because of all yeah, the I, I have lots of friends. Not a, one of them has ever offered to pay for a new transmission for me. He, like this is the way this gentleman is. He's just that kind. He's that kind. And you're suing him? Because uh, because he won't he won't do he won't do that kind ridiculous thing he offered to do for free. <laughs> That's right. And so you're suing him. That's right. Why don't you just get your car and pay for your own darn transmission I like the rest of us mere mortals? I don't have the money because Mr. Wahlberg has all my wife's money. Ah, and the my plot money. thickens. Hold on. So the defendant wasn't making any money. Can the plaintiff sue for this? Can the plaintiff sue? I think so, because he should have gave the car back in a reasonable... Well, what's he getting out of it? What's he getting out he's of not it? Getting, he's not getting anything. So can the plaintiff sue him? Say no. No. Good. Go inside the courtroom. What do you mean Mr. Wahlberg has all your wife's money? My wife started investing in his company in 2000. What kind of company? It was a patent technology company. <laughs> okay, what does that mean? What is your company? Innovations of new products. It wasn't my company. I invested in the same company. I didn't own it. Okay. I was an investor. That's all I was. And does he feel that his wife lost money because you gave him the tip or something? Is that the idea? No. Uh, in truth, I told him about a business, and I saw a lot of merit in it. And uh, I gave $10,000, and she gave, over a period of time, $50,000. There's uh, a lot of false witnessing after investigations. Uh, didn't work out? It didn't work out. Mr. Kayaski kind of put the kibosh on it by sending out letters of fraud and you I, Because they're mad that they lost money. Right. Well, they didn't lose it. I promised they'd get it back. We Why just would got, you promise that they'd get back money they invested in a company? Because that's who I am. Because I believe in the company, and I put $125,000 in after So now 50. it's your company. Right. Okay. I owe nothing. They gave no money to me at all. But... Because of my heart and the right thing to do, this is how I am. I'm a reverend of the cross ministry. Got to do the right thing, and that's it. Why are you paying for his transmission? If the guy has car problems, why doesn't he take his own car to his own mechanic? Or if you're only referring him to a mechanic, why isn't he discussing price with that mechanic? Uh, it's a good question. He just probably expected me to pay for it because of how I am, who I am. 
Now, I'm and, sorry. And, how, how does who you are mean you will pay for his I expenses? Don't, that's a good question, Judge. I don't know. He just assumed I would. He moaned and groaned about it. I felt so sorry for him, but the vehicle down there, I assume he'd work things well, out. Did he happen to work in there? Well, you know, we lost all this money on that investment, so we don't but have money. Did he try to make you feel guilty about it? probably who? did, but I'll pay yeah. no attention Because that's that. the only thing I could see for, for I being... I don't pay any attention. Uh, right. He thinks but that way. He I don't. thinks that way. I don't. So, well, but then why do you agree to, to fix this car, then? Because of my heart. I felt bad. Will you fix my car? Sure, I will. Okay. Bring Anybody it down. Else bring have it car down trouble? <laughs> bring Anybody? it down. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody need anything no. else? Okay. All I right, so the... you agreed that he was under the impression that you would pay to fix it. And then five years pass. Why? Why do five years pass? Like, it's not five months. It's not five weeks. It's five years. Mr. Walbert keeps on saying he didn't have the money. There was no finances. He's too busy working on his company, getting the patent for his lock. What did you do for five years? This wasn't your main transportation? No, I did my wife's car. Okay. And then plus, Mr. Wahlberg gave me a 1985 Chevy Caprice to use while my truck was down there being fixed. He just gave you a car? Yeah, I got the title sitting right here. He didn't <laughs> sign off on the title, but he gave me the title of the hold with a <sighs> bill of sale. Okay. And plus, I have a letter stating about my truck that Mr. Wahlberg was going to pay for all new painting and all new parts for my truck. Let me see the letter. I, Are you I talking about a promissory note that you had him sign? I don't have right. that. I didn't have him sign it. What did he that he signed it. Who wrote it? Oh, Mr. Wahlberg. Not directly to me. What? I, Can I, we see that? I don't know anything about this one. As I promised, I will take care of the cost of bringing your truck back to the 2,000-year level. I will take care of the repairs and painting it so it will be and look much better than new. This will be the year that all our disappointments will subside and we all can move on forward to enjoy the fruits of our work in investments of the past. It just sounds like you just feel a little guilty. I'm not saying you should feel guilty. I'm no. not saying that you're responsible. People, eyes wide open when people invest in a company. Don't get me wrong, but it does sound like you're trying to be nice because you feel bad about that. I do. Be patient, for I will deliver the promises. Love, Lyle. Okay, just so I get this straight, you are telling me that this is just a promise he made. Right. He promised to paint your car and he didn't, so you're suing him. And whatever mechanical problems were, was wrong with the truck to bring it up a year 2000 because... Okay, but you did nothing. There was no what we call in the law quid pro quo. This is not a contract where you gave up something and then he agrees in return to go ahead and fix your car and paint it and bring it up to 2000 standards or whatever, whatever that means. No, there was no agreement. No, or... it's purely a promise on his part right. to you. Okay. You end up picking up your, your truck finally? Is the transmission working? Yes. Oh, okay. But there's um, a lot of the things not working because it sat there for five years. Okay, yeah, whose fault is that? Here's the thing, you're suing him based on what you readily admit is a promise that he made that he'd get your car paint. Right. But you can't. I can't. You can't, because okay. a promise is not a contract. I could promise that I'm going to love you until the end of our days, and then I could change my mind. It, it, I could promise that I'm, you know what, if I win the lottery, I'm going to give you half, and then I could change my mind. Unless you give up something, such as you give me 50 cents for that dollar lottery ticket, so you're in on it. Unless you give up something for what I am saying, it's not a contract. Both sides have to be giving up something. If I hire a roofer, I'm giving up money, and the roofer's giving up his talent. We're each giving up something that's our contract. Here, I've asked you, you know, seven ways to heaven how it is that this arrangement worked. And you were like, hey, I felt bad about something, you know, something else that's, you know, an investment unrelated. So he said he'd take care of it, he didn't. So now I'm suing him. On what? There's no contract. It's just him saying he's going to do, at, right. at best for you, him saying he's going to do something and then not doing it, which is painting it. It's just the way it works. And whether there were intervening circumstances that caused him not to decide to spring for a paint job or whether he just changed his mind. It's not something that's actionable on your part. You can't get a judge to make people fulfill their pr empty promises. Okay. They're just promises. They're not contracts. So my verdict in this case is for the defendant. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. So the defendant prevails in this case. Mr. Kayeski, he sounded like a pretty good friend. He was. But, but you don't sound like a very good friend for filing a suit against him. Well, if somebody promised you something and you...
do something for that gentleman, and he says he's going to fix something, and you don't fix it. Well, you learn and, the hard way. You well, can't yeah. sue for a promise, you okay. know? Yep. I, I guess the friendship is kaput, right? Well, you can't trust it. You can't even trust the minister. That's what you can't do. Thank you. All right, Mr. Wahlberg. I want to point out, you do look like a minister. You are a minister. I am, yeah. We yeah. should at least bring that out. All right. So what do you think? Uh, I feel bad for him. And I, okay. I pray, like all I do is pray for him. I mean, that's all you can do because okay. I, I don't want to <laughs> see discord among the brethren. That right. is one of the things that are destroying our country right now. All right. So I don't want any part of it. So, I mean, I feel bad for him. I, I try to help when I can, but, you know, it's... Uh, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. You want to sign a few yeah. documents? Appreciate it very much. There you go, Harvey. What do you think? Okay, so in order to sue, you have to have a contract. To have a contract, there's something in the law called consideration, which means each person's got to get something or else it's unenforceable. The defendant got nothing. The deal's unenforceable.